that you worry. It don't tell them that you trust them. Come on here. Because a person that trusts God, you're going to be looking for God to do it. And because seeing God said, I need to know, do you really trust me? Because see, some of us, we have a problem with this trust thing. Say that. You know why? Because we really don't know one. That's right. Because if you really know a person, and if I say, Sonny, I need you to come and pick me up at 5 o'clock tomorrow, I know you're going to come and get me. No doubt in my mind. But how come God told you he's going to bring us out and we struggle with that? I, I, I just don't see how that's going to happen. It just don't make sense to me because I, I see what it looked like before me. And God said, but I need you to trust me. I need you to trust me regardless of what it looks like. Come on here. Because turn, turn, and even right there, let's turn to Acts the 24. Because see, this is where God began to show me that even this is where Paul was with the disciples. Not the disciples, but he was on the ship. But this is where Paul was on the on the ship. And he was a prisoner. And see, in I think it's in verse 27. Look at uh verse look at chapter 27 and look at verse 21. Let's start on 19. It says, on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard in their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. And after they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice and not to sail from Creek. Then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage. I want you to underline that. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Now I urge you to keep up the courage because not one of you will be lost. Mm -hmm. Only the ship will be destroyed. And that's what God is telling you. He said that I want you to keep the courage. And what you're going through, I want you to keep the faith. Come on, what's the other part? What's the other part? But I urge you to keep the courage because none of you will be lost. He said none of you will be lost in this situation. None of you will lose your mind in this situation. None of you will go crazy in this situation. Come on here. He said only the ship will be destroyed. In other words, that the situation that's around you, what it looks like, come on, because in the natural, it looks like you're going to be destroyed. He said, but I'm looking for some people that will believe me over your situation. I'm looking for some people that will believe me regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it seems like, regardless of what it feels like. He said, because see, you got to understand that the situation, things going to be destroyed around the situation, but you won't. He said, because I'm going to bring you out of the situation. Just imagine what, this, what it was like with these men. They was on the boat with Paul. Come on here, they was prisoners. And don't you know, so they, they hit something. And you just imagine the ship getting ready to be torn down. It's breaking, it's sinking. And God gave him a prophetic word to give him, be encouraged. Not one of us will be lost, only the ship will be destroyed. And God said, that's about your situation. He said, it won't be destroyed because that's what you believe. See, I only can do what you believe me to do. If you don't believe me to do it, I can't do it. Because, see, you got to understand, I only can meet you where you at. If you don't see me to do that, I can't do that. If you don't know me to be a healer, I can't be no healer to you. I only can be what you allow me to be. Because if you just know me 
Jesus and get some money, that's all I'm going to be to you. And you can be going through in your body and you won't be able to get what you need to get from your body because all you know is that sign of Jesus that helped you financially. Wow. He said, but if you take the limitations off of me, you take the limitations off your thinking, off your intellect, and to just believe me by faith, he said, I can meet you right where you at. In the question, in the statements, this is all what he needs us to do. See, because see, he's going after our faith and going back too. Because if you believe him to do it, the Bible says you can't find nobody else to believe with you. The Bible says you can believe by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He can be the second person to agree with you. He said because where two or three are gathered together in His name, there I am in the midst. Come on, now. Come on here. So I can do it. All I need is two people just to believe with me that God going to do this. And God said, I'm going to do it. But I need for you to believe this. He said, because who said this situation is final? Who said that I can't bring you out? Who said that I can't heal you? Who said that I can't deliver you? Who said that I can't turn it around? Who said it? Wow. Come on here. Then you may say, well, man said it. But he said in Proverbs 20. Come on now. Come on. He said, when well, everybody don't walk away, everybody don't turn their back on you. 